Hey guys, if you like to party and the stop block is what you're trying to go fast on, we have a new brand for you here. Stop block the world. Go to the link in the video and support us. It should eventually lead to t-shirts, hoodies, and other apparel. What's up guys? So this is what I'm doing today. Uh, this is our turbo, the Gen 1 Pro Mod 94. Um, when we had the wreck, it ripped it off of the mounting flange. So it, it had broken this bolt right here, which came out easily. But you can tell right here we lost some of the flange for the uh, turbo pe pedestal. So what I'm going to do is, since there's still plenty of thread there, I'm going to actually use the TIG here and I'm going to build this material back up so we still have a good area to uh, bolt to that's going to be flat. You know, we use this Maven mount, so they use an O-ring around this portion anyways. Uh, but we just want to try to fix this. You know, this thing is, uh, even though we got it second hand for a not too bad of a deal, it's still, you know, definitely not going to throw it away or spend the amount of money it would cost for precision to put a new center section on it. Uh, probably honestly what it costs, I'd imagine, what it costs for the turbo. So. Alright, as you guys can tell, I used uh, the sander right here and uh, smoothed everything out went around the over the edges a little bit that way I can get as close to them as possible with the filler uh, I wiped it down with acetone now I'm just going to preheat it some and I will start right. some so as you can tell I got it welded up you know it was well below before and this angle might not be good but now it's uh, above the other surface so I did like that on purpose so I can grind it back down once it cools because I gotta wait till it cools to put my cap back in and then uh, I'll measure off and kind of get the hole drilled. Um, we still have a lot of thread in there so it's, it's not a huge deal if the uh, the first quarter inch of thread isn't there. So as I'm drilling my hole here I decided to use a, uh, a unibit and uh, or whatever you want to call it, and it broke. You see it's in there. Thankfully, it's pretty loose. So it won't be a big deal to get out. But a nice little right, guys, As you can tell, it looks like I got it taken care of. Um, this is just what we had the turbo mounted on last time, and we cut it off. We're going to reuse that mount again, because they are expensive, so no reason to waste it. Um, let me take this piece off and I'll show you what the main surface right, looks like. So you like. can see here, um, obviously it doesn't, it doesn't look like it hasn't been modified, but because it has, um, it probably requires an extra level of patience and machine capabilities that I don't have. But the bolts thread in there good, and we were able to preserve it, and it's pretty flat. Um, obviously it wants to get it run a bit of real test, but with this Maven, flange having the o-ring in it that was pretty thick too I am not concerned about it but I know some people may think it's a little ghetto but you know it, I think it's just stupid to throw a turbo away especially when you uh, don't have that kind of money to waste so so thankfully we were able to preserve that um, now we're going to get to working on the mounting the the pieces for John's front end so we can remove it. So now we're moving on to making the front end removable was one section. Um, as you can tell the other night we did this right here and I had left my camera at home so I couldn't record it. The benefit to this is you'll have these two Zeus's right there and you take them out and you can just it's easier to get everything over the tires because especially once the car's painted and stuff you don't want your uh, front end uh, indoors getting beat up or you know nicking the wheels or anything else uh, so we'll have these rear supports here the lower side of the uh, fender will stay on and then we'll also have it'll have a piece to where it uh, latches up front as well it kind of slides in but we'll have to get to that later but uh, now this side right here John's been working on fitting up the piece of the door and now we're going to start grinding everything and uh, tacking and welding and trying to get this piece knocked out.
All right, guys. So here's the update. Um, it took, it, it took a little while just because we took our time. Uh, our buddy Sammy came around, and we proceeded to just, uh, you know, we have no reason to really rush anyway, so no big deal. But uh, this side right here, went ahead and the last part you saw me welding was this this uh, Zeus rail along it. Uh, the Zeus rail is tacked on this side, but front has to go back on and everything, and we won't have time to do all today. Uh, but this is overall, I'm glad we did this. This is a pretty uh, cool thing, and it certainly uh, will make taking the whole nose off. Uh, obviously, before we didn't worry about pulling the whole nose off because we had a stock bumper, but uh, now with this uh, hardwood front end, and then John's going to fix the hood on there, so it'll be a lot of screws. So it's just faster to pull the front end off since we are going more race car this time. You can tell he's got his, he made some uh, rails the other night for it. He's going to go back in and uh, fill those holes in from where we used to have the Zeus rails on it. So it's getting there. Uh, hopefully our torque boxes arrive soon and then we can start on the more uh, hardcore side of cutting again. What's up guys? It's time for a, uh, another video. It's been a little bit. Um, today is February 1st, first Saturday in February. If you know anything about the first Saturday of February, you know it's National Remove Torque Boxes from Your Old Mustang Day. So, for, at first though, we're going to go ahead and pull all the uh, pre-existing hoses and lines and stuff out of the way because stuff is going to get redone again for the 28th time. And then we will start on the uh, torque boxes, which will be a separate video. As you can see, we got the old trusty 88 under here with our uh, two JM Fab shocks, pullovers, low dollar motor, sports travel sensor, enemies everywhere, and our roll bar. It's a bunch of proven parts that work really good. Um, and then, of course, the trans cooler, which is probably coming out permanently, and then our catch can. Uh, another thing John's done since the last video was he ran the uh, catch can out from where the tag uh, used to be because he got another deck lid and that way he'd want to chop it up. But it's going to be a long day and uh, figured you know, might as well get started early so you can see if we can uh, get these things done. I'll keep you updated. Alright, so if you remember from our other videos from whenever we transferred the front clip, you can tell we left some stuff on this side that is not on this side. So what I'm going to do is take off the same pieces off of this one. Um, we plan to put, uh, you know, add more bars and stuff anyways, but there'll be no way to save another couple pounds. Hey guys, so uh, John got the rear end out. You can see a lot more spacious. But uh, we currently have these uh, battle box reinforcement plates in here. And, you know, we can't complain. They've, they've done well. A lot of guys making a lot less power have ripped out the factory uh, torque boxes before. And it's probably also worse than stick shift cars and stuff. But that's your upper ones. That's your lower ones. So now the... Uh, Next fun part comes of uh, removing uh, these old ones. What's up, guys? Another late Tuesday night here at the shop. Time to work on a race car. Saturday, we finished up the torque boxes, and even though our bodies still haven't fully recovered, we're moving on to the uh, next part which is what we've been planning to get to for a while now and we can finally get some uh, spooled media keep us motivated but now it's time to finally cut this pesky floor out just got done removing the uh, dry shaft safety loop and the shifter we had in there um, as I said in one of the first videos the plan is just to go between the frame rails here chop all that off we'll kind of square it off back towards these uh, plates on the floor and then we'll box that in, of course, tie it back into the uh, 
lower bars as they get installed in the floor. Uh, and we'll cut all that out back there where the uh, torque boxes uh, will reinforce that, where we had the cage tied into that, and of course the floor itself. Um, hopefully there's a decent amount of weight here. Uh, I, I, yeah, it'll be about the last big chunk we can do before uh, um, before we go really, you know, also about the last big chunk in general we can do. So, but yeah, that's our plans for tonight. We've never cut the floor, floor out of a car before, but our good buddy Sawzall doesn't really care what it is. He said he can take it out for us. Alright, we got the uh, floor cut out. Check it out. We weighed it, and it's 23.6 pounds. Um, obviously, what we're putting back is going to be lighter, but of course, we got to add bars and stuff as well. Uh, so, it, you know, it won't be a, a huge weight loss off of that, but still something. And of course, the chassis itself will be stiffer. But not bad for 40 minutes worth of work. Um, obviously, still more to to do some cutting, some grinding, and then we still gotta get that rear area out. But so far, so good. All right, so we tried to clean off the factory frame connectors, and you know, the, the cleaning stuff I had just sucked, wouldn't work. Then we got to talking with our buddy Don of PSI, PSI Performance, and he somehow swindled us into now deciding to cut the whole floor out and basically redo. Uh, we're going to get rid of the frame rail connectors we got in there, the aftermarket ones, and just uh, essentially do the rest of the floor like it would be in a 25-3 car. Uh, so we just added a little more work to it, but it's going to get more weight out and be lighter, better. Um, so yeah, that's what happened. we got to get some uh, more tools from the hardware store the next day or two, and then I assume probably Saturday we'll start uh, the process of uh, cutting the floor out and all that jazz. So it's 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 more work, but it'll be better now. And uh, I don't know what else to say. I'm sure in the middle of it, at some point, we're going to get mad about it and regret doing it. But then when it's done, we'll be happy and it'll be cool. But that's it for tonight. Uh, somewhat productive. It went from, uh, you know, what we thought would be a good starting point to run some more bars to decide we should cut more out and then run some more bars. Morning, guys. Saturday, February 8th. And today we will commence in cutting the floor out. Uh, Tuesday night, I kind of updated you guys that we decided to uh, change our minds and uh, just redo the whole floor area. So I went to Lowe's this morning and bought a bunch of uh, blades and grinding wheels and stuff like that. Things I really didn't have to the night. And today we're going to start uh, that process. Before we can do that, I've got to go through here. And essentially, I'm going to cut some uh, pieces out on the plasma table so we can uh, fix the cage to the, to the A-pillar. That'll, that'll offer a uh, level of support up high, followed by doing the 
same thing back in here and then once we get the four out we'll make some lower supports for the rocker bars uh, by doing that we'll be able to make sure that, that the cage itself won't uh, sag any you know right now it's tied into the strut towers in the rear but don't want to put all that weight on there so that's where I'm at I'm getting ready to get going on that and I'll uh, get some updates along the way so I drew up the A pillar supports in Autodesk and then I ran the toolpath for it then I go here to Mach 3 and I've got my table set up already and I just go over here to start You can tell it just displays the code as you're going across it. But this is just the usual process for cutting out something in the plasma. So we got our plates cut and cleaned up and tacked in place at all four of the corners. Yeah, not only will this hold the cage up while we do the floor stuff, but it will uh, help add the little structural integrity to the, uh, the roof as well, since we cut a whole lot out there. But now the next part is to uh, get those things welded in, and uh, we can move down to the floor area. So we got those welded in. It wasn't too bad. Uh, the the factory B pillar, especially with where it's welded at, is kind of on a seam with two pieces of press together. So it was pretty nasty. A little uh, harder to uh, uh, like you you you'd be going along and pull some trash out and all that fun stuff. But we got it. If you notice, we we're kind of moving slow on this passenger side because our old cert sticker is there, and it's still in cert for another year. But uh, and obviously the cage, we should be able to get it updated afterwards, but if you get those things hot to like try to remove them, they actually will start saying void on them, and we do not want that to happen, so. But get that part done, we're going to get some food and start on the next part. Uh, 
update, guys. We got the passenger, or sorry, driver's side of the floor out. It was about 21.6 pounds. Uh, we added another cage support right here, and we're going to do one more on the uh, passenger side. We really didn't notice much movement, but we figured better safe than sorry. Uh, so about to do that, and then we can get the other side out. And if it weighs about the same, that'll be you know around 66 pounds, give or take, total, including the center section. So it's pretty cool. But back to it. There she is. We are now going to try to Fred Flintstone it. All in all, we got 67 and a half pounds out. Um, obviously a stock floor would not weigh that much since a stock floor doesn't have the two by two by uh, eighth inch thick uh, frame connectors in it. But uh, we also removed some extra bars. I don't know where they're at now. But you know, we had the down bar that had a down bar off of there. You can see where it was. And then the uh, two more, another down bar, and then two uh, bars that went to the the frame connectors. And since we're going to redo all that, we're going to grind those down. We're not going to have these diagonals anymore, uh, diagonal down bars. And uh, and then we'll eventually we'll get those back ones cut out where the uh, torque box reinforcements were. But that's where we're at. Now we can start grinding on the. Everything getting it cleaned up, making our plates, getting our uh, frames tied back in together using inch and a half chromoly, and cap off the end plates or the ends of the the uh, tube that was down on the eighth inch plates before. So all in all, productive Saturday, and uh, time for us to get you know get this place cleaned up. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe.